when I thought about what an alcoholic was, um, I grew up near San Francisco. And all you could do is walk about three blocks in San Francisco and you see someone curled up in a corner or in a door jam with their clothes on, smelling really badly, with a bottle in a bag. And that's what I thought an alcoholic was. I really did. My place of work, which I happened to be a nurse, there was a talk from the addiction medicine doctor. And he started talking about alcoholism as a disease and went through the whole biochemical process that goes on. And that started the process of me really learning more about alcoholism and how oftentimes people can look very put together, can hold down a job and whatnot, but be an alcoholic nonetheless. I was that Wonder Woman super mom, held down the job, did well at my job, I, you know, did all the extracurricular things with my girls, but inside I felt horrible. I was just totally unhappy most of the time, but would put that smile on my face and so I looked really good. And, and a lot of times I thought I was just a whiner and complainer that really this was the norm and I should be really grateful for what I did have. I had a roof over my head. Um, I had three beautiful and healthy children. I'd say since I was in high school, from when I first started dating, I um, was attracted to people who drank and got involved with illicit drugs. And, um, and I think that there's a part of their behavior that I'm really attracted to. Not that, not as, that it's not so much that they get drunk and, or anything, but they're creative and smart and they're, they have a lot of life and of course they do get depressed and there's a whole other side to it too, but um, I like alcoholics. They're, they're my kind of people. And when, I, when I'm with someone who's not an alcoholic, I kind of find them boring. Actually, I thought that, that once they got sober, um, they would stay sober. And it's incredibly disappointing when they drink again. Because it feels like they've promised something, and I just believe they're going to keep their promise. It's, it's sort of naive, I guess, but I just think things are going to change. And when I got into recovery, I was expecting to figure out how to get the alcoholic to stop his drinking. And even though I know better now, I still think that sometimes. What can I do to get him to stop drinking? And I know that I, I know now that there's absolutely nothing I can do. He has to come to his own conclusion in his own way. And it's, a, it's very frustrating to love a, a practicing alcoholic or a dry alcoholic. They're the greatest people in the world and they're the most frustrating people. I've spent some money on uh, some of the men I've been with. Uh, usually I seem to be the one who's the main money maker. Um, I, I paid off about $30,000 of his debt. I know that part of me, since I have the money, um, I think I like to help people. It gives me some sense of being important, having the financial um, strength in the relationship, but uh, I really changed that. I learned my lesson, and that was an expensive lesson to learn. If, um, well, I think the, the guy who owes me money would really love to be able to pay me back, but I think he's completely back in debt again. I tried a lot of things. I had babies, thinking, oh, I'll have a baby, then he'll be, feel like he should be a father, a responsible dad. That didn't work so well. Then I had another baby, thinking, okay, well that'll do it. Well, then we'll get, we'll buy a really cute house, yellow with white trim, little picket fence in the front, that'll really help. Not so much. Maybe a station wagon. Maybe. We'll